Добре, здравейте всички. Казвам се Костадин. Hello everybody. My name is Kostadin Golev. And uh, I'm here to talk about Journey 5. Now after we have given the helicopter. <laughs> okay. So first uh, just a little about me and uh, who I am, why I'm here. <laughs> I'm using Java for more than 10 years. I have What is the year that Java 3 was released? I think that the previous year I started using it. Uh, I have developed over the years a very strong interest in unit testing and test automation in general. So uh, people that know me, they'll find no surprise that I'm here talking about JRNIT 5 and that I have followed the development of the JRNIT 5 closely. So I'm here to share this experience uh, for you, with you. And uh, yeah. I tend to use test automation a lot even for creation of this slide, <laughs> as IntelliJ IDEA users will probably recognize. So first, let's talk a, bit, bit, a little bit why do we need JRNIT 5? I mean, isn't JRNIT 4 perfect? <laughs> so some facts about JRNIT 4. It is released more than 11 years ago. So probably many people here in this room didn't even start writing code 11 years ago. And people that used unit tested on the JVM, maybe they all they used in their career was JUnit 4. So are there people here that use JUnit 3? Okay, some hands. Are there people still using JUnit 3? Uh, yeah. So there are, I, I happen to know that there are like two, three people here that are, sh that are ashamed. <laughs> to, to admit this, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, there has not been a major version for 11 years, 11 and a half. There have been 12 minor version of uh, JUnit, uh, but nothing really changed, nothing significantly changed for years. There are some features, but maybe like I call them like a power features, not very widely uh, used. And development was kind of slow. Java evolved in the meantime. There is Java 8 for three years now. JUnit 4 is based on Java 5. And other test frameworks over the years evolved, found better ways to test, to write tests, to write test automation. And uh, JUnit 4 currently, UNIF is the most widespread tool testing on the JVM, the default one. Everybody is using it, but it's really not up to date if you have seen what, uh, what other what other frameworks are using, especially in other languages. So what are the issues with the JUnit 4? What caused this slow development and what are the other issues? So first, it's tool integration. Tool integration was not taken into account at all during initial JUnit development, which was a problem because JUnit was popular even then. And developers, they wanted their tool integration. They wanted their IDE Uh, to be integrated. They wanted their build tools to know, to run tests, to produce nice test reports. So the build tools, the IDEs, they found ways to integrate, the unofficial ones. So there was a slide, there was a guy talking about clean code yesterday. It was a very nice talk. Some of you have been there. And he had, he had this slide and he said that uh, you're not supposed to you're not supposed to be afraid to change any kind of name in your code because somebody wrote it 10 years ago, they, they chose a perfect name. So if you have a, a better one, just put a better one. So yes, put a better one, unless there are many IDs and build tools using reflection to access this tool, and if you change it, <laughs> then uh, your tool and ID support will be broken. This is exactly what is happening with Journey 4. They really don't know what, what's, going to, what's going to break if they change, because there is no official API. So this is obstacle for development, And one of the main reasons, it, uh, there has not been a major version in 11 years. So other problem, big problem, is the extension mechanism. Right now we have like two ways to extend the functionality of your unit test. One is the runner, the other is the rule. A runner is very powerful. You can replace any kind of test, like a test life cycle with it. You can do everything with it but it's based on inheritance, it's not composable. You cannot combine runners. So even if you have this very cool runner that's doing this 
think that it's incredibly useful. You cannot combine it with the other runner that is doing something incredibly useful, but different from yours. So rules are a way to fix this, but they are not that powerful. Unfortunately, they're not powerful enough. So uh, we need some kind of extension mechanism that is powerful and composable, and this is something that Journey 5 has, uh, has addressed. So the goal of Journey 5 is official integration API, so we don't have to wait another 11 years for the next version. <laughs> Design for extensibility, and of course, keep up with all the changes in Java based. Uh, Journey 5 is based on Java 8 right now and other frameworks that evolved during the years. So where can I find JUnit 5? So if we go to Maven Central, you'll find that there is no JUnit 5 jar. <laughs> Everything in JUnit 4 was at exactly at the same. It all has been one big fat jar. It will launch test, it will run test, it will provide the annotations and everything that you're using to, to write the test. So if you go there, you'll see a lot of a lot of, <laughs> of jars grouped into three groups. One is the Journey platform, one is Journey Jupiter, and one is Journey Vintage. All of these together compose Journey 5. But uh, how do we navigate? How do we know which is the important one for us? Do we care about the Journey platform? Do we care about Journey Jupiter? And what is this Journey Vintage? So who cares about Journey platform? Your tools depend on Journey platform. They're using the Journey platform to launch tests. So you, as a developer, if you are writing tests, you are not going to use Journey platform. You, you know what it does, but it's not, a, it's not a requirement. It's not something that you should be aware. How exactly does it work? You should know the basics. So who cares about Journey Jupiter and Journey Vintage? You, people in this room that are going to write tests, unless, of course, you want to write another ID or another way to test on the JVM. <laughs> Journey Vintage is used if you want to run your new test, Journey 5 test, together with your old test, Journey 4. So this is the way to run your old test, Journey 4 test. This is the backwards compatibility provided by the Journey 5. I will explain how this works in a while, but first, Let's write some tests and see what is this all about. So first thing about writing a test, you need a dependency. So this is a Gradle dependency. If you're migrating a test from JUnit 4 to JUnit 5, then you need another dependency. It's JUnit Jupyter API 5. You'll see that this is M4. This is the milestone for the JUnit 5. It's still not released yet. It is going to be released this summer, so in a few months, in July or August. One of the two, I don't know, the date keeps like moving. <laughs> um, so this is, uh, this is what you need. Because, so if, if you write tests, this is the dependency that you need to, to write them. JUnit 5, in this new Jupyter API, Jupyter, by the way, why Jupyter? Because Jupyter is the fifth planet <laughs> from the sun. So it's a full rewrite based on, like I said, Java 8. So all the annotations that you're used to, the test annotation is moved to another package. So you need to change your packages as well. And uh, other things that changed. You all know the lifecycle annotations. <laughs> so before class became before all. So if you have a test and you want to run something before all of your tests written in some class, then the journey team decided, okay, before all is a better name. So let's change it. And before became before each because people were confused, especially new people. Before what? It's executed before, before what? <laughs> so, yeah. Other thing that changed. Uh, if you like to ignore your tests, then you'll be disabling them from now on. This is another new name. Yeah. So if you write a JUnit 5 test, you should use this. Okay, test annotation also got one change. It will not expect any parameters from now on. So no parameters. That means that if you're using one of the, maybe not the most unrecommended one way to test for exceptions, it is sounded weird, uh, then no, you cannot put expected exception uh, on the test annotation. There is a new 
assert throws that is doing this. I'll show it more detail on the next slide. It's, uh, for now, we will have one nice way to test, finally, <laughs> exceptions in JUnit. Also, timeout, there is a third timeout. So what bot uh, runtime, what bot assert throws and the third timeout are doing, here is the exception. Uh, so you have a third throws, you put the exception that you want to be thrown, and you pass a lambda, you, you wrap your code inside of lambda, so method that throws the same exception with some message, assert throws, you then return exactly the exception that was thrown, and you can assert whatever you want about this, uh, this exception, if you want to. So much better than the previous three ways, like there are three ma major ways to, <laughs> to do this before. Okay, and something very convenient, you don't need to declare anything public anymore. So no need for your test class to be public, no need for your test method, so it just saves you a little bit of boilerplate, it's pretty nice. Okay, so what about the runners and rules? Remember we talked there is a problem with the extension model? So the short answer is there are no runners and no rules in JUnit 5. There is something that replaces them, we'll go in more details later. So now, Let's see how we can run our tests. <laughs> so the most convenient way, the first thing you can do is use JUnit 4, there is a runner <laughs> that will do this. So if you want to try it, just, just like this, to play with it, there is limited functionality provided by a JUnit platform runner, and uh, you, can, you can run it. But as you see, this is, this is just for playing purposes, it's just for getting started, it doesn't have the full functionality, so it's better if you use the official way. And uh, for the official way, we need to explain why do you need to care about the JVM <laughs> uh, platform. Why is it a platform now for the JVM? So for this we need a story. And the story is, uh, how does the development of JVM 5 started? So, the JUnit uh, team gathered and decided, okay, we need, to, we need to get together, take some time, discuss, and see what, what is going to be the next JUnit version, JUnit 5. So they launched a Kickstarter campaign that was successfully funded, and uh, they used this for, to fund a few months of development. So they gathered together, they started putting everything in one big fat jar, just like it was before. But after a few months of, developer, of development, <laughs> they, they started to see some, they said that, hey, guys, these, these projects, these models, they don't belong together. They have different concerns. They, they really are separated. The thing that launches the tests, the thing that provides the API, the annotations for the developer, the thing that is providing backward compatibility, they're really different. So let's split them. So this is how now we have so many dependencies in Maven Center. <laughs> yeah. And uh, these, these three different things can evolve different, now, now can evolve separately, which is a nice thing. So how does this all work together? So we have a developer, let's call him George. I have worked with many developers that are called George and they're all awesome. So if you're a developer and you're called George, in my experience, you're an awesome developer. <laughs> so, so he wants to, to run his test. So I need, I need some help here. So George, for, is he using IDEA or Eclipse and Gradle or Maven? So can you help me? Eclipse, OK. And, he, and what, Gradle or Maven? Gradle. Gradle, OK. So let's say he wants to run his Gradle build and using the tests, and he wants to run the JUnit 5 test. So he says, okay, test, uh, test my build, please. And no, you, I command you to test my build, you don't say please to Gradle. So George has configured a Gradle plugin written by the JUnit 5 team. So when he says run the test, uh, it will launch the JUnit platform. There is a launcher in the JUnit platform, and the JUnit platform launcher will look and say, hey, this is a specification of the engine that I have provided. Are there any implementation of this engine? And he said, hey, yes, there is one, and this is the Jupyter engine. The Jupyter engine knows how a JUnit 5 test looks like and can run this test 
on the platform. So this is how this engine implementation will run on the JUnit platform, and George will see the report of the tests on his machine. How can we run this JUnit 5 test then along with the JUnit 3 and JUnit 4? Because what we saw right now, it will run only the JUnit 5 tests. But George has two types of tests, JUnit 4 and JUnit 5, the new ones. So you can still run them, but it will not be the JUnit 4 that runs them. It will be again JUnit platform, but using the JUnit Vintage, because JUnit Vintage provides another implementation of the same specification provided by the platform. And this is how you run all your, all your old tests together. So you can see it here, maybe it's a little more clear. So you just put as many engines as you want. It could be for Java, it could be for other things, because it's not only for Java. Test engine implementations currently already exist for Scala, Kotlin, Groovy, other frameworks. <laughs> yeah. This is still in development, and this is pretty big because if you right now decide that I am not, I am not happy with the way uh, testing is happening I don't, uh, in Java, in the JVM. I want to write a better test engine. I want to show a better way. Then you can just implement your own test engine and it will int be automatically integrated with every tool that is uh, integrated with the JUnit platform. So it's pretty big. So you, you have many ways to test pro probably in the future. Something really weird may happen. <laughs> Most. Yeah. So some important new cool features that came from JUnit 5. So the first is assert all. You can finally assert as many things as you want. Uh, this is how it looks like. Assert all, you can pass like lambdas to it, wrapping your assertion. And in this example, you see they are both going to fail and they're going to produce exactly this message. So to yourself, there are multiple failures here. I was expecting one, but there was a two. I was expecting one string, I got another one. So it will not, all, it will not stop on the first one. It will test all of them. And this is good. Yeah. Except, of course, <laughs> be careful not to get overboard with this because if you got too many assertions, this is probably a sign you're testing too much. <laughs> yeah. So be careful. Uh, okay, what about the runners and the uh, rules? Again, what is the JUnit ex extension model? So both the notations are, ex are replaced by, sorry? Uh, assert all. Okay, sure. So the question was if one, if, okay, yeah. you can repeat the question. Uh, if the first assert is one expected and one, I mean, it's okay, and the second one is failing, what you, will happen? You get, again, it will fail, you got one error. Assertion will fail. Yeah. But it will not stop on the, it will not stop after I have found an assertion. Okay, but what is the purpose of this assert? Oh, I, I don't get it. I mean, I can write my asserts line by line in the code. Yeah, one by one, but if the first one fails, the second one, is it going to be executed? No. And now they are going to be executed, all of them. All the errors are going to be collected together, and they're going to be reported together. So if you have five assertions, two fail, two error, two error reports. So you'll see that both failed. Otherwise, you'll see only the first one. The second one will be hidden, you have to run the test again, and then after you finish the first, <laughs> after you fix the first assertion, then you will be able to see the second one that fails. And uh, yeah, this could be a problem. So is it okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. So extend with is what replaces rules and uh, runners. This is a simple Mukito test. I mean, this is a test that uh, has some Mukito, Mukito code in it. So you put extend with 
on the class, or you can put it on a test as well. Uh, but in this case, we need we need a request. There is some mock, there's a dependency, it is going to be injected in our library, and we run the test, and everything is okay, and everything runs because all the mocks are created and properly injected. So what is the Mokito extension doing, if you know how, how this works? Then it will, it will just call these Mokito annotations init mocks on the test instance. So maybe some of you have uh, put this code before in your uh, before setup uh, test lifecycle method. So, Mukito extension implements an interface. The interface is test instance post processor. So, this is one of the extension points provided by the JUnit 5, by the Jupyter API. So, after the test instance is created, this will be called, and the code in it mocks we run, so our mocks will be initialized, everything will work as possible. So there are around 10, maybe exactly 10, uh, extension points you can, you can use to write your own extensions. So extend with is composable and powerful. You can put as many extensions as you want on a method or on a class, unlike the runner. And wherever you want them. And this really solves, uh, solves the problem. Now, of course, because there is no release yet, there are not many extensions. But you have heard Jurgen, who, no, the Spring architect, he said there is going to be a Journey 5 support in Spring 5, even if it's, uh, it's, it's based on a milestone version of Journey 5. The reason is there is a very close collaboration between the Journey 5 team and the Spring test team. Actually, one of the authors of the Spring test, if not the author, is one of the core contributors of the JUnit 5. So there is a Spring extension coming. You can still you can use it right now, even with Spring 4. I have tried on a few tests and it seems to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is going to be Mukito extension as well. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. You can write it yourself. Uh, in the next release of, of Mukito. So my Absolutely favorite new feature, maybe two features because they play well together, are nested and display name. So these are two annotations that you can use, but let's see why do we need those two first. So if you have this simple class, it's a library. So think about physical library, not uh, no, software library. It got books in it. And there is a method, it's called add a book, add book. So you, you pass a book, and it, it will do something with them. So after talking with the business guys, you decide, okay, what, what uh, is this supposed to, to do? So you think about some test cases. And there are like four test cases that you think are very important you want to implement. Uh, so I'm, can you read this? Is it easy to read? Not very easy to read, right? This is how it looks when you oh, you run the test. It, this is how it looks in idea. And I'm going to ask you, is this better? Do you want to see this in your test runner? So it's much easier to read. So if a book exists, it will increase amount. And you can even put some characters that you cannot put in a test method name. Uh, or if the amount is more than a limit, then I don't know, maybe do something. If the book does not exist, then create the book if the book also does not exist, then send new book notification. Hey, we got a new book to whoever is interested. Maybe the librarian. So how does this work? There is a new annotation. Let's call display name. And uh, you just put a string, whatever you want. If you want, you can put emojis. <laughs> it will work. <laughs> so so this, is how, this is how it works. This is how it's, uh, it's nicely visible. The most, the, okay, but we're st still kind of not done yet. If we go here, there is some duplication. There is when book exists and another when book exists, all of our test cases start using the same way. And the reason for this, tests are often not a list, it's a tree. So when you look at a class, you'll see a list of methods. 
When you think about test cases, there is usually three, there are branches of logic, there are things that you need to test in these different branches, they require a bit different setup, and then you need to translate this to a list of, of methods inside a class. So how do you do this? How do you make a branch structure? How do you make a tree inside of your test? So this is how it will look, this tree. So when book does not exist, when book exists, the common stuff is uh, separated and everything else is, uh, is inside. So this is, this is a tree created from the same, the same structure. This is very nice, doesn't, does not only make it easier to understand and to organize better your code, and much better easier to read also together with the display name, uh, this has other benefits as well, and I'll, I'll, this, um, I'll show why. So how do you do this? There is a new nested annotation. So you nest classes. Every nested class, you put nested annotation on it. So I, I don't know where to point. <laughs> so you put nested annotation, and, and uh, this, is, this will produce the result. Of course, you can put display name on the nested as well, and it will work. So this is very nice as a way to organize your tests, make them more readable. Why do you need a test to be readable? Because people are going to read them, and people are going to read them where the tests fail. <laughs> so when your build fails, you want to know what happened, right? And every kind of uh, information is, uh, is good, good to know there. There is something else, however, in each of these nested test cases, you can put a before each. You cannot put before all because of the limitation of the Java language. So you cannot put a static method inside. But you can put a before each. And all common setup that you have that is duplicated between all your test cases can go there. So it will not only make it uh, nicely organized, it will also be a lot shorter. When I, this, this is a feature that I use a lot. I use it with the custom runner in Geonit 4 as well. I use it all the time. This is one of the first things that I do when I see a test. And usually leads to, especially if I have a lot of common setup, usually leads to tests, tests that are sometimes twice as small and much better to maintain than before. So, Parameterized test. This is another very good feature from the Geonit 5 team. Can I ask one? Sure. Yeah, so the question is if there is a before each in the parent class and then in the nested class, yes, they're going to be executed first in the parent, then in the nested class, so you have a, a setup like a incremental setup. This is a, yeah, again, very useful. So parameterized test. So why do you need parameter test? Suppose you have two very similar tests. They're so similar that you think, hey, if I can just extract those two in a method, I mean, this is a string is less than 10 character test. And, um, okay, so th they are very similar. One is, uh, it's, it's string length, so one is taking a small string, the other is taking a bit shorter string. Both of them do exactly the same, so okay. I will extract this as a method because I'm a clever developer, I want to save some, <laughs> some space. This will still not get, get me rid of all the boilerplate that I have created, and it will make my test less readable. So what I can do, and I can remove almost everything, is this new method that I have created that will just take a parameter, the string, that I'm going to check the length against. I'll make this a parameterized test. So you put a new annotation, parameterized test, so instead of test, you put parameterized test, and you provide a source for the value. So in this case, it's value source strings, and you put all the strings that you want to be, to be there. This should be something that you can iterate away. Okay, there is a question. Can you combine this then with the display name and use some parameter expansion? So the question is, can you dis combine them with display name? And uh, so yes, you can. I'll show right now. 
<laughs> that you can. Yeah. So also, this is this is sorry. how it works. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, also, um, I think that they they probably don't provide a way of, uh, of having an, uh, a like user-defined entity in there. Sorry. And so so you you provide a value source with a strings parameter, but let's say I want to provide my entities and like a list of, of well, entities. We'll get to this in two slides. Okay. Yeah, there are many ways to put other, other sources. Uh, this value source, it will work when you have a single input source. So, okay, first the names. <laughs> this is what you can do with the names. So, uh, I just, squares. I just have a question. Yeah. And I have a microphone, okay. Okay, uh, but ca can, I, can I answer uh, first the two previous ones? Is okay? Ah, uh, <laughs> because it's about the previous slide, but yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. So, so this is what you can do. Uh, you, can, you can use the display name on the parameterized test, and you can further also uh, modify what, you, uh, what is done. So the first test, it's... Uh, you, you can see squares, and the second one, you can see that for the each instance, there is a number. Uh, this is the numbers by default, like the index of the, the index of the value that you that you set as an input. So you can you can play with this. Yeah, there are different value sources that you can put. This is to answer your question. Uh, you can be strings, you can be integers. There is something called CSV source, which is. Uh, like a CSV input you put inside and you even do some type conversion <laughs> for you. So if it sees uh, one and one, it will one it will know it's an integer. So it will convert it as an integer. If you see a, if it's a string, it will be a string. So all these are provided as a parameter so you can use them on your test method, like we were like we have seen before in the test. You can even put a method source, so just name of a method. And this name, in this method, you can put anything you want, even your entities. <laughs> yeah. And as many arguments as you want, as long as, as you want an array or a stream, uh, is something that this method should return one of those. Okay. Okay. And you wanted something? Yeah. So Here. basically about a method source. Um, uh, I think we can provide something like external uh, file or some stream, something like this, and just read it from there and uh, run the test with the values from the file, for example. Or? Yes. First, if you use the method source, obviously you can do this. Because the method can return anything. It can get it from wherever you want. There is also a CSV file source. So you can actually put a CSV file on the class path and it will read from there. So this is another opportunity. Yeah. So other interesting features. Oh, there is another question, okay. Uh, for the method source, uh, what type of method should be, uh, should be static? Uh, what kind of arguments can you pass to it? Because you just specify the name, how do you pass arguments to it? And so I don't have an example right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, in the presentation. Okay, we, want, we can finish the presentation and I'll show, okay. I'll open ID and I'll show you, because I have there. Yeah, um, okay, so other features, parameters in test method, we already saw this with parameterized test. If there is other ways to put parameters there. Uh, there is uh, something called parameter resolver, which is an extension provided. Um, so you need to, Okay, you can use this. There is dynamic test. Dynamic test is an interesting concept. So far what we have seen is a test defiled at compile time. So you define what kind of test uh, you want and it will be run. Dynamic test is something that you can actually construct tests at runtime. Different kind of tests. It could be anything. So uh, it's not very clear how exactly this feature is going to be used, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, but it's there, maybe somebody will write an interesting test engine using it, who knows. You can tag your test, so just put a tag, annotation, provide a string, and then, okay, these are my fast tests, these are my slow tests, this is my integration test, this is my REST IP test, and please 
the build will run only these uh, tests or others. Uh, if you need to repeat your test, for some reason you like to repeat your test <laughs> like 10 times, there is a repeated test annotation and you just pass, say, okay, repeat this test 10 times, it will be repeated test time. Okay, uh, so these are the major, the major features. Last but not least, IDE and tool support. So IDEA, if you're an IDEA user, you're lucky. <laughs> they, they support the milestones as they go. They support for a year now. Uh, they support the latest milestone right now and where there is going to be the last milestone five, I probably they will support it pretty quickly as well. Eclipse supports it in the current Oxygen beta. So there's the next version of Eclipse, which is due in a few months, I think. I think in July. I, I'm not sure about the release date. Uh, Oxygen will not have uh, support, but Oxygen 1, so Eclipse 471, they are targeting official support there. This is for September this year, so pretty soon. It is, yeah. So Maven and Gradle. There is a Surefire provider written by the Junit 5 team. It's fully functional, but uh, it's not yet to take an ownership by the Maven team. So it's still not inside of the Maven project. People are waiting for the official release date of Generate 5 before they actually transfer ownership. Uh, this is the same with the Gradle. There is a Gradle plugin uh, written again by the Generate 5 team, which is again fully functional. So you can use the plugin, you can configure your builds, you can configure your Surefire to use the provider. Uh, is just no native support right now, so you need a little bit extra work <laughs> at the moment. With next releases, this is going to be changed. Okay, when is the release date? I already mentioned it's for third quarter this year, so uh, they said July, then I said August, then I don't know, it's uh, complicated. I cannot find the source. <laughs> when is the going to be exact date? But it's going to be this summer. Yeah, if you want to play with it, if you want to read about it, anything, then you can go to journey.org slash journey5. And there is a user guide, which is pretty nice. There is Javadoc. If you have uh, like an issue, there is a link to, Git, uh, to GitHub there. And if you have any questions, uh, the team prefers Stack Overflow. So like, like everybody here, I guess. Yeah. So, okay. So there were questions, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to answer your question in a while and to see you the methods. Uh, this is the end of the presentation, so if you have any questions, uh, we can go right now here. And if you like the slides and you want to check them again, uh, they're on the link uh, seen here on the screen. So the question I got, I don't know who, where, where was the, ah, yeah, there you are. You were asking what, uh, you, you want to see an no. example of the method, uh, method source, right? No, actually I have another question. Is there any point of migrating existing tests to use new JUnit uh, 5 engine? I mean, is there any performance improvement between old engine and new vintage? If, is there any point of I process? haven't seen, like, no, it, it doesn't matter which is going to run them, actually. I have run the test for a few of our production, actually. Mm -hmm. Test I have just to see is there going to be much slower or much faster, and I got almost exactly the same result. So, okay, yeah. I haven't done a benchmarking, but, uh, but yeah. And if it's going to be helpful, they were not only unit tests, but also test touching the database, different kind of tests, yeah. So, uh, about the parameters test, how they, they use, okay. Okay. Oh, I think this is going to be better. Okay, so this is the string content provider example. It just needs to return a stream of arguments. And then you put as many arguments as you want. And then it's, uh, this is a string and int provider because you know the first parameter is 
string and the other is uh, is an int. So this is how this is how it works. So if you want something very specific, this uh, this can be done. There is a few other sources. I do not put all of them. Like there is even a num source. If you want to iterate over a num, <laughs> yeah. So other questions. I have a question. Uh, sure. Uh, okay, if we have a nested uh, tests okay. and we have a setup method in outer class and in the inner ones, which setup method will be executed first? In the outer class and then in the nested. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's incremental setup going uh, going inside. So you can separate your 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 setup and it can follow the logic and the tree of the of the test. Case is three. <laughs> I don't know if I'm explaining this, uh, but I think it's yeah. Sure, behind you. So you mentioned that they they removed the the rules and uh, they're only using now the the extension notation. Yeah. Um, do you have a way of uh, specifying the order of, let's say, I, I have a an external resource. Like we use rules mo most mostly for that. Let's say I initialize a connection in, in the, the before and after that I want to close that. And is there a way of chaining those like um, we, we had that support in, in JUnit 4, like the rule chains? So you, you want to do like open the connection then close it after the test is finished? This is yeah, what you're trying to... Yeah, but let's say I want to open a file, okay. open a connection, then close the file and close the connection. After the test is executed. Yep. Okay, so there are extension points which is before test execution and after test execution. Yep. So, so you can implement, you can write your own extension, which should, it will be called, I don't know, file, open, connection, yeah, something. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm asking is, is there a way of specifying the order of the of the, the befores and the, and the afters. You see what I mean? Let's ah, say okay, so they are dependent. Yeah. Ah, they are dependent. Actually, I'm not sure if there is a order. Like a root I haven't, chain. So I, haven't, I haven't checked exactly yeah. this, uh, this, so maybe you can check the, okay. the official documentation. So I don't know if, if they're executed in order. What I, what I can say you is uh, you can, if you have too many extensions, you can combine them in one composite. <laughs> Annotation, so they they support this. Yeah. Okay, is that all? So nobody else. Okay. Thank you.